Welcome back to Caribbean Sailing. We are going to show you our journey from Panama to Mexico, where we are now. We crossed the Panama Canal from the Caribbean Ocean uh, to the Pacific, and we've done some significant uh, sailing to get here. So we've also got some information on uh, an equipment failure that might affect a lot of you. So stay tuned. This has definitely got to be one of the one of the top places to sail in the world. All of this, um, you know, you you still got to be careful, but you know, it's not that bad. What I'd say is uh, the port captain's a bit of a megalomania here, um, and somehow with absolutely zero experience um, in the marine field. Uh, in fact, I think she was a. I was told by someone that she was a coffee barista before. Um, she just leaves the radio unmanned for long periods of time and uh, decided to go shopping apparently one day. So um, yeah, if you're, if you're checking in, I suggest you check in with Red Frog Marina, which um, I'll show you uh, later on in the presentation. But yeah, there's also a, a marina and an anchorage here. This is in the entrance to Bocas del Toro. And, you know, really interesting town. And the only thing was it was very quiet for us during the pandemic. And actually, Eva usually likes most of the places that we go. She wasn't that keen so much, I think, on, on, on Bocas del Toro town. But I can imagine it'd be quite fun, um, especially for, you know, the younger crowd, you know, 20, 20s and, and up. Um, but, you know, I'm just to, just to remember that most of my episodes here are focused on, you know, providing information, being a bit more educational. So, listen, I could show you lots of my, my holiday snaps and that kind of stuff, but don't really think there's much value in that. Um, but anyway, so we made our way from Bocas once we've done all the checking in. But what I want to say is I'm a real believer if somebody treats me well or it's, uh, um, you know, I had a good experience, uh, then I think I should let everybody know about it. And, and if I was going to do it all again and I need to do all the check-in procedure and everything and get some rest after a massive journey, it would be Red Frog Marina. Uh, the, the lady that helped me check in, it was, even though I didn't actually, you know, move the boat up in Red Frog. She was very helpful. And what you can see there on, on, on Google Maps, I've marked as hostile skiff. Yeah, the, 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 the lanches or the skiffs that, you know, go to and fro between the town, Red Frog, buzz, buzz past through these mangroves. Um, so if there aren't other, other boats anchored somewhere, that's probably for a very good reason, but not necessarily. Uh, so if you anchor somewhere, you know, be prepared to move on or, you know, receive a little bit of hostility. So I did get a little bit of hostility. Um, so, uh, yeah, absolutely amazing place, the whole of Bocas del Toro. But what I would say is that I've, um, you know, marked us up as insurance clean reef, and that, that's my own term. But, you know, definitely do not rely on Navionics in any of this region. You know, for maybe you'd be all right for, you know, the main entrance and the channels, but, you know, it's commensurate with the, the reception of the port captain. Terrible, you know. Uh, like to put it in perspective, even even the little marina next to the port captain, um, we're trying to charge us 20% extra for fuel while we were waiting to check in. And the port captain deliberately made us wait uh, for like two days for no reason um, before we checked in. And in fact, with the help of, of another nice lady, we managed to, to get ourselves checked in using the um, the, um, the Panamanian um, health uh, authorities really did their job very quickly. Once I once I got onto them, boom, we everything started to flow very quickly. And then the port captain had to do a job, um, which she finds difficult. So yeah, so this insurance claim reef, uh, very 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 dangerous place, uh, folks. So if you look at it, you can see that I've marked it out as as pure, poorly charted water and crawl key as well so my advice to you is don't do it just stay north as you can see where i've got um red frog marina and everything you could simply do the longer route go around come up by punta vieja to see these nice islands worth seeing but very dangerous um so that that island um would probably when if the pandemic's not on be you know maybe busy i don't know it'd probably be packed but highly recommend you see all this this region anyway um, should be on your uh, bucket list uh, anyway. Now, what I should show you is I've, I've done a very quick jump and a lot of miles um, past what's really important, which is the marine complex. I'm uh, just going to show you here. There's the canal complex for the um, in Cologne. So I buzzed past all of this 
and you'll wonder why. Um, I, I was really curious, I like history, and um, there's this, this anchorage here is called Portobello, and um, Portobello was discovered by Columbus, and I have to say, as far as anchorages go, this has got to be top 10 anchorages in the wild. So you have a northeasterly trade wind coming through almost all the time, no mosquitoes, uh, keeps the boat cool, and um, you've got that little town Portobello, and you're just surrounded by so much history. It reminds me a little bit of Mahon in, um, in, in Europe, in my, one of my favorite anchorages in the wild, which is Mahon in uh, Menorca in Spain. And I met a buddy here who uh, I anchored right outside his house and we had a bit of fun. So if you ever stop in Portobello Anchorage, uh, uh, say hi to Gabriel, he's in a very nice house there. We had a very interesting story, which uh, was that myself and Eva were diving. There was a very badly announced quarantine period uh, and it was actually only in Panama City, but the, 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 the very bored military uh, Found it, took it upon themselves to enforce it, which they're just flexing, if I'm totally honest. Um, and um, they decided that they wanted to uh, steal our dinghy while I dropped the anchor and why we were, you know, we were on a compression dive. And I could hear a, an outboard above me. And so I surfaced with a two knot current as well. I surfaced by what uh, is called Drake Island here. Um, I knew the end island quite well, I'd wrecked it beforehand and there's a beautiful beach there but basically came up, surfaced and the military had stolen our dinghy. Unbelievable. Uh, just to try and prove a point and uh, yeah, pretty pretty scary stuff swimming against two knots of current with all our kit, back to shore, no dinghy, coral reefs and then we had to, you know, what you see um, kind of in this, this sort of region here we, we landed all our kit in the beach and I walked around and eventually the, the military came back because there would just be no way to get back to civilization from here without some sort of uh, boat. Uh, so yeah, pretty crazy. Hell of a story, um, but uh, yeah, uh, what, can you, what can you say, what can you do really? I've heard stories of people being attacked in this region, but that's the whole of Latin America. But I'm, I, I'm, unless you're drawing a lot of attention, I think you should be all right. This is a place that quite a lot of people hauled out, including myself. So we hauled out Linton Bay and uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan at all. Um, although I've got things done in the end pretty cheaply and um, it's a very hostile place, just generally rough. Like there was a lady attempting to exploit me and, and the people working for her were just a horrible person. Um, and you know, uh, the, the, the bar for example, which is meant to be a clubhouse, <laughs> is a shipping crate and you pay, you know, double the price for uh, just a tin of beer, which you can walk five yards away in, into the garage and, and, and get some cold beer. So yeah, shipyards are never a nice place to be. I don't know why a lot of those kind of, let's say, hippie-ish type sailors seem to end up here, but um, it, there's, there's obviously some islands northeast um, and nice communities that you can go visit. But if you, if you know this place at all, uh, you'll, you'll have done a bit of research about all the things you can see but I strongly suggest, although you can haul out here, I, I, would, I would advise it against doing it again. So that's Linton Bay. Uh, I did go somewhere else later on, um, and, and there I would very highly recommend, which is uh, Shelter Bay. And it's in the old American Fort Sherman complex. Um, and although I'd say it's probably pretty heavily guarded, it's not overtly so. Um, but yeah, Shelter Bay in the whole region. We were very glad to get back into um, a bit of normality. It has, during the pandemic, it was, it was my, mostly like the quality of food and stuff wasn't that great. So we were quite happy just to come to a good, let's say sports bar and <laughs> in, in the whole complex. And I just have a, a shout out um, to Juan Jose and Eddie Vega of, of Shelter Bay extraordinary gentleman nothing was ever too much and uh, yeah I'm, I was just blown away by by how nice they were and as you will have seen also um, I met Paul and Cheryl Shard from Distant Shores here and uh, yeah just just a great experience all told Cologne's pretty close as well and as well as that um, you know Shelter Bay provide a, a shuttle service for free 
to go into Kalar and get your groceries and all your bits and pieces. So, yeah, just if it's how marinas should be done, and I would say the same for Red Frog as well. You know, just it's it's you know you miss that kind of service and stuff when you start going further afield from Europe or perhaps from the United States. So eventually we pass through the canal complex and again, like I said, this is more educational. Um, but it takes two days normally to cross through the canal and um, I, I can add some footage and little bits and pieces uh, of, of our transit. Extraordinary achievement of engineering and on top of it, I took one of the guys that helped build a bridge uh, and was a project manager over the bridge, a German guy. Um, and um, he basically was a, well, <laughs> the most amazing tour guide through the whole the whole thing but it's incredible like I mean you just can't possibly imagine you know the the lake it's just a huge huge lake uh, it took the whole day to navigate it um, and to get through the other side then we you know slept up on the night tied up to a huge mooring buoy intended for ships uh, had a good snooze and then started the next day it's quite a fiasco the I wouldn't say the pilots that come on board they're they're guides rather than they don't take command of your vessel but yeah um, Mm, first guy, he, t he took a shine to Eva, well, he's only human, but uh, a little bit rude about it. Um, and uh, yeah, the second guy, very professional. Um, but anyway, that's that's what it is. Uh, and unfortunately, going through the canal complex, uh, through, through the canals, I used my thruster, and for some reason my thruster failed at one point. But no biggie, uh, thrust thrusters do fail. And so, yeah, anyway, we pushed on, and just bizarrely, two days later, surreal uh, I came through uh, the other side into the Pacific and it's just a surreal feeling we uh, ended up anchoring and where everybody else seems to to anchor and you know what I'm not really sure why it's not that protected um, I know a lot of people that got stuck here during a pandemic and a lot of drifting anchors a lot of boats bad bad idea don't anchor around a lot of boats if you can avoid it because somebody will slip anchor drag yours and it'll be all you know Hell, hell will, you know, will bear down on you, and it's chaos. So yeah, we, we basically our mission was to get to 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 um, Costa Rica um, and further afield before the hurricane season. So, you know, although we didn't get a chance to do everything, that's sailing. You know, the wind, the wind is favourable. Use it. Um, but this is a spot I recommend you go. Um, and there's quite a quite a lot of places along here that 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 are attractive. But what I would say is I've got a uh, kind of a pin there that says nowhere to hide that stretch on that south port part of Panama no no real good place to hide there at all so you've got to provision and plan plan for things well ahead but uh, there are some gems like this whole region here um, but one of my favorites of all time this anchorage and my friend Tomas who, who joins me occasionally um, bloody good fisherman and he's becoming a hell of a sailor um, and myself and Eva we, we, and the dog, we just love this little island, Chikorita Island. It was mind blowing. Not a very protected anchorage at times, but God, it was worth it. We had literally a desert island and a big one to ourselves completely. You know, you could just, if you had enough provisions, you could just stay there for ages. Anyway, so we, we push on and um, that's what you do. And uh, we ended up coming to, you know, crossing the border of Panama and arriving up into, again, you know, I could easily do this all again. You know, arriving up into uh, uh, Costa Rica and to Golfito in particular, mind-blowing place, absolutely mind-blowing. This whole bay that you're looking at, um, and Tomas is also a very able sailor, um, and my friend that I had on board, and you know, he says Pavones, where it says surface dream there. It it was what it was meant to be. He just said it, but it you know obviously pretty high level surfing, not for me. You know, it would be like, you know watching a, a whale trying to surf um, watching me surf but anyway Thomas very good at it and this whole region all of this is is just mind-blowing beauty but what I would say is unless you're in a bay like what you're seeing there if you're in any of this, this exposed coastline very very difficult to land a dinghy because this you know the swell is so much the breaking waves on the beach although you see lots of beautiful beaches you just simply cannot take a dinghy there uh, but this this place Although you're a little bit further afield now, uh, very interesting. And if I had a s slightly lower draft, I would have explored it a bit more further up to the north-west uh, there on the map. But this whole region, uh, you know, 
you could re re-victual your boat in Punta Arenas, and you could spend a lifetime exploring on these little islands. Mind-blowing. Uh, again, we had it's very badly charted, um, but this would be a good test for anybody that wants to learn a new boat that they maybe bought in Panama that was an aluminium, maybe a, a shovel draft vessel with a swing keel like I talk about, uh, like a Boreal or a Garcia, something, something exploration. This would be a good place to, to test out, you know, life at sea, test out shallow draft areas. You get a good bit of practice without, you know, really hurting yourself or hurting the boat um, too much if you made a mistake. So yeah, really good. Highly recommend that folks. Um, but. I think there's one an island in this complex. I think it was called Tortuga Island or something. Uh, wow, just mind blowing. We found an, an anchorage that, you know, only the locals find. And I saw this this guy, you know, with a 30 foot or so monohull, just buzz past me in the anchorage. I was trying to get on the radio to tell him to chill out because the map, you know, the charts said that it was very shallow water. Just didn't, you know, didn't have a radio, and went in around this bend and like something out of a movie, you know, just this incredible beach. He's the only a person at anchor. And so we went and had a campfire there and even being Argentinian, we had, it was an excuse to, to have a, a parisha. This coast is very hard to land a dinghy. And, and, and it's for that reason, when you come to Latin America, you see the typically very long lanches they're called. Um, and the long dinghies are designed so that you back up with, you know, a stern two onto the beach and the, the length of the dinghy stops it getting flipped over or like you do with a, a rib. So having that long nose on the dinghy lets you disembark, you know, the, the, the passengers or crew. Um, and then they give you a push off. And most people, if you do it well, you can keep your feet dry, but you can't on a rib, unfortunately. So what you really need to do is to find somewhere that's protected enough. Um, and I'd say the best one of those, there's many options along here. Um, but the best one of those is Playa del Coco, and you can also check out of Costa Rica in Playa del Coco. Uh, I would leave a couple of days for the checkout process. It's pretty arduous, um, and uh, you know, there's a lot of flexing of uh, muscle by making you sit and wait. And whatever you do, do not uh, complain. You know, suck it up, and things might go a little bit easier for you if you if you brought a gift of a bottle of rum with you. But anyway, so. Um, and it, that's, uh, we, did, we, we deliberately avoided all of El Salvador, all of that stuff, and ended up straight in Chiapas. So just to explain, you need to do your, your zarpe. It's not like in Europe. You can't just you know, sail and turn up wherever you feel like because of the bad drugs problem, presumably, um, a lot of the things. We missed out Nicaragua for obvious reasons. Um, and um, you can see a bit of Honduras there. Now, if you watch the best sailing channel in the world, you'll know that the, the skipper of uh, a trimaran had problems with um, some pirates in Honduras. So, yep, we're gonna give that one a miss. And El Salvador apparently is the murder capital of the world. So what do you know? We give that one a miss too. And already done most of Guatemala. Uh, kind of got the vibe from it from the other side in the Rio Dulce. Felt like we've kind of done most of it all already. Uh, so the, the logical thing to do was head for Chiapas. And Chiapas is also a great spot to, um, to hide from hurricanes if you're stuck in the kind of southerly part of the Pacific Mexico. You can hide away from hurricanes down here. Pretty good. Uh, this whole area is uh, steeped in history, very, very uh, uh, good quality soil. Um, but at the moment, they've got an immigration problem with African immigrants crossing from Guatemala into Mexico. And so, yeah, it's locked down. Very difficult for these guys, um, the, both the immigrants and also for the, uh, the border patrols to manage it all. But you've got the lot here. Great, great, you know, great quality food. You know, the, the land is good. Um, hot volcanoes. Um, you got the whole lot to see. And then from then on, um, I've kind of ended up doing some of the. I'm going to cut short a lot of some of the most uh, interesting on dangerous sailing, perhaps, um, in the in in my view. But we we've done Acapulco and we've done done a lot along here. But like I said, it's very very difficult to land a dinghy. So you think somewhere's going to be good. Um, along here, and this is a notorious stretch along here. This is the Tuantepec region, um, and uh, yeah, you you need to you need to hit this right because it's so bad. It can be so bad the waves here, especially for the novice sailors, that the, if the wind comes from the northeast or the east there, 
I've heard stories apparently of some people ending up all the way in Hawaii. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but that gives you an idea of, of, of what's going on here. But Acapulco, yeah, interesting spot. And there's loads to explore here. Puerto Escondido, not, not as safe an anchorage as I thought. Decided to give that a miss and we ended up in Acapulco. So you can see there's quite a lot uh, of distance between the anchorages. And then I found it quite tiring along here. So there's, there's not, you need to prepare well for this whole stretch. Um, and most, most, of the, most of the American sailors don't come as far south as Acapulco. Uh, you know, so there's there's quite a few places and really what you're doing here and all these spots that are mentioned like Zuatanejo and Lazaro Cardenas and Manzanillo, all of these are important really for hurricane dodging. So yeah, you can understand why once I've found a good spot along this coast, I'm staying until the hurricane season's over. So anyway, hope that helps and I can talk to you. I'm thinking um, while I'm doing this video, it might be a bad idea to uh, give you an idea about hurricane dodging and weather and reading weather so uh, maybe that might come up in one of the next episodes and please obviously um, you know please comment I, it's really helpful if you give me a comment on what you want to learn or maybe hear about maybe you know something and you feel like I might be able to add some value uh, but um, I have an interesting story that I'm going to add and drop as part of this episode that's happened recently um, so it's a bit of a mishmash you know I'm giving you uh, places and time are all different but obviously now, where I'm recording this, I'm in Barra Navidad in Mexico, uh, where I've just done a little bit of coastal sailing and uh, I've got some good stories. So we're back in the engine room of Carry On because we've had an engine failure while we were at sea. And rather embarrassingly, I also had the engine failure while I was taking Eva's dad for a sail, of course. So what's happened, and I suspected from the, from the outset, I managed to hot wire my own engine to get it started. And um, I was warned by a very good Volvo mechanic in Malta, who I think his name was Kurt, so hi and thank you Kurt, that um, I should probably buy a spare engine CPU, which is one of these. So I'm now speaking to you after I've done the whole um, rewiring because there's a lot of cursing and sweat and I can tell you, you probably don't want a close up of my sweat <laughs> and me in such a confined space because if you're a sailor and you have experience, you know what it's like. It's pretty tough, especially in the tropics. So what, what's broken essentially is this, this uh, engine CPU. I, I've replaced and rewired the original CPU. And I've done that by these are the rewiring points. So there's just three rewiring points, pretty easy. And then I took out these um, data cables, of these which are just really easy to unclip and pull out and replace them. So I've replaced like for like, pretty easy to do. Um, 15 amp fuse in the top of the old one here, which I'm gonna keep and salvage. So if I, if I can get in here, which I probably won't be able to now that we're filming, but I can get my access to the fuse. There's a little fuse here, which is fine actually. Um, a, little, a little bit, yeah, it's fine. So that 15 amp fuse is fine, and I'm going to keep that uh, for in case the fuse blows because it's quite a specific fuse for this CPU. Let's call it the engine management system. But yeah, this is a 500 euro piece of equipment, and that I've had spare in case this happened. Now, what I'm going to teach you to do is in case this happens to you at sea, uh, how to hot wire your own engine. And what you do is you bear these cables here, and I, I haven't replaced it back. It's not back on the engine, so I can show you easily. Basically, there's on the side of this, you can see there's a, uh, a preheat, a battery, and a start um, on the side of the diagram of this CPU. But in essence, what you're trying to do is you're trying to touch the middle one, which is the battery, um, with this is the start. So you're basically just using a spanner, which is what I did at sea. It's the quickest way to do it. Touch a, a spanner between these two connections and you'll see a spark and make sure your fingers and everything are away from the motor. And this touching the two of those together, let's start that. And so this is a Volvo Penta D2 series and this is a 75 horsepower. And if I was a gambling man, 
I'd say this was the same CPU for every D2 series uh, Volvo Penta engine out there. So there you go. There's a quick way to hotwire your own engine. Gracias por vernos y suscríbete y en inglés. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Give your like and subscribe. See you next time.